Hi, this is Jane from SafeNet AT. In this video, I'm going to show you the steps necessary for creating a KMIP server on Key Secure for Government. I've taken the opportunity to do some pre configuration on Key Secure so I don't go out through all the configuration steps. We do have videos available to help you with those steps, but I will show you how Key Secure is configured in support of creating the KMIP server. Before I do that, though, I want to point out here on the home screen the number of application servers, server licenses. In order to have an operational KMIP server, you must have at least one of these server licenses installed. If you don't have at least one, your KMIP server will not be operational. You can configure it, but it won't service keys. So make sure you have the appropriate number of licenses that you need. Clicking on the Security tab, I will show you some of the pre-configuration that I've done. First, on the Local CAs tab, I have created a certificate authority called SafeNet ATCA that will act as our root of trust for this demonstration. It will be the, the signing certificate authority of the server certificate for the KMIP server. And if I were to go through the process of signing a client certificate, it would also sign the client certificate. So this is the certificate authority that will be the root of trust. And I have also made it trusted by putting it in a KMIP server demo trusted CA list. This is the list that will be assigned to the KMIP server that shows it what certificate th authorities are to be trusted. In this case, it will only be this one, but you do have to have at least one in a trusted CA list. Now you will see that there is one called default. Upon installation, KeySecure will create that default list and you are free to use it if that's the only one that you need. The other thing we need to create a KMIP server is an SSL certificate. Now I'm using SSL interchangeably with TLS, which is actually the protocol that will be used with KMIP. Here you can see I have created a certificate called KMIP Server Cert that the issuer is SafeNet AT, which is the issuer of the SafeNet ATCA certificate authority. Um, it is a server certificate and it is active. So this is the server certificate that will be bound to the KMIP server. So with these things in place, we are ready to create a KMIP server. So I'll click on the device tab and it will default to the key server page. You'll see that there are already two key servers already created here and you can have as many as you need and servicing many applications and there's actually already a KMIP server but I'm going to go ahead and create another one to show you how to do this. So click the add button and in the protocol drop down select KMIP and here you will choose the interface if you only have one you can select all or the particular interface and here's where you set the port number that this KMIP server will listen on. I'm going to use the standard default of 5696 for KMIP. The important thing is that your KMIP client use the same port. So it can be anything between 1024 and 65535, uh, but just make sure your KMIP endpoint has the same port. You will click on use SSL, actually TLS. Um, and here is where you will select the server certificate that will be delivered in the TLS exchange. So with that, click Save. And now with that still selected, we're going to um, start to configure the properties of the server. So click Properties. These will all remain unchanged for the most part. You can just leave those as is. And down here in Authentication Settings, click Edit. Password authentication should remain at the default of not used. Client certificate authentication should be used for SSL session and username, and I'll talk more about that in a second. The trusted CA list profile, you will select the profile that contains your trusted CA for the KMIP server. And the username field in client certificate is where you will select what field in the certificate will be used for user authentication purposes. The KMIP server will pull from the client certificate from the field you choose here 
and look for a local user in Key Secure that has been configured and matches that name. So that is how user authentication is performed. It will pull and compare a name from the certificate with a local user that must be created in Key Secure. And I will show you how to create a local user when I'm done with the KMIP server here. But for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to select common name. That's a commonly used field for this. And most people will leave this option unchecked and not use the source IP and try and confirm it's coming from the correct IP address. So with that, the KMIP server is configured and I will click save. With the KMIP server created, I'm now going to show you how to create a local user. Click on the security tab and then the local authentication option and you'll see the local user section here at the top. To create the local user, just click add and you'll want to enter the name and again in our example this would be the common name field that's going to be in the client certificate so I might just I'm just going to type client name and that would be the common name field and even though password authentication is not used you do need to add a password as the local user page does not know how the local user is going to be used so you need to enter a password in case it is needed uh, these options can remain unchecked for KMIP. Click Save. And you've just created the local user for the KMIP client. Now the last step, if it hasn't already been done, would be to create a client certificate. And that client certificate would need to be signed by the signing certificate authority. In our case, it would be the SafeNet ATCA. So you would create a um, certificate signing request through whatever means is provided either by the KMIP client itself or some other source like OpenSSL and create the, the CSR and select your um, signing CA. Click sign request in this case and, and select client and enter the certificate duration and then just paste in the certificate request and click sign. At that point you would be presented with the signed um, certificate that you could copy and or download and then install it into your KMIP client at which point you would be ready to test. So that's it. You have a um, configured KMIP server and you're ready to go. I hope this has helped and thanks for watching.